I'd like to welcome everyone to the uh, meeting of, of December 14th of the Quincy Planning Board. I'd ask for a roll call vote. A roll call. A roll call, excuse me. Member Glenn present. Member Kamisa present. Member Callahan present. Member Barry present. Member Me present. Full. <coughs> yeah. um, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of the public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any meeting. Att media. Uh, attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are, be are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledgeable by and permissible. First item on our agenda is the, uh, uh, the minutes from our meeting of October 19, 2016. I think the board members have all had an opportunity to review those. Um, I'll be entertaining a motion to accept. So, for a second. Okay. Discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the first item is a continued public hearing for 3139 Newburgh Street Site Plan Special Permit Planning Board Case 2016-11, continued from October 19, 2016. Mr. Chairman, good evening. For the record, Christopher Harrington, my law office is at 21 McGrath Highway, and I represent uh, Heat Treating LLC, who's the applicant in this case. Uh, we came here this evening to give you an update on the status of this project and where we are. The, uh, we've received uh, comment letters from the city departments as well as a, a peer review report from the city's peer review engineer. Uh, we've responded to all the comments in those letters and reports, uh, revised the plans and revised the uh, stormwater report and the traffic report uh, to incorporate all of the suggestions and all the requirements that were given to us by uh, the peer review engineer and, and the city departments. At the moment, uh, we recently refiled, re released, recently filed, excuse me, um, revised plans and revised reports. Uh, the city departments and the peer review engineer have not had time to review those revisions as of this evening, so uh, there's no real expectation that the project is, is ready to move forward or we'll vote tonight. Uh, but we wanted to let you know where we were. The project uh, has been reduced to 17 units. It was 82. So we have a 17 unit project. Uh, I'm sorry, 72. Oh. We have a, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's all set. It's even written right here. So it's a post right? Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a 72 unit building, 118 parking spaces, which is uh, 10 more spaces than what's required by the ordinance. Um, our traffic engineer, Jack Gillen, uh, prepared a full traffic report with uh, traffic counts for Hancock Street and the intersection of Hancock and Newport Ave, and also the ramps from the Newport Suburban Bridge. So that, that information has also been submitted. Um, the most significant news, I think, is that uh, our LSP, uh, Mr. Baird, has been in touch with uh, officers and officials at Mass DEP about the AUL, uh, the status of the property and uh, cleaning up this site uh, while the project is under construction. And he's had several discussions with them and uh, several uh, very good positive discussions with them that he'll, he'll tell you about. Um, it's our position, we stated this in October, that uh, this project can be cleaned up while the building is under construction. Uh, the primary issue with the AUL that's presently on the site is that um, with an AUL, it prohibits certain uses on the property, and you can't have that use on the property um, until um, the site is remediated or the AUL is amended for the new use. So there's currently an AUL on the site that says it can't be used for residential purposes. Um, our position is that uh, you granting permit to build this building is not the change of use. The change of use doesn't occur until the building is finished and the applicant goes to the building department and applies for an occupancy certificate for a residential building. So today we have an industrial building on the site that's not prohibited by the AUL. Uh, assuming this is approved, we'll have a construction site on the property for at least a, a year and a half. Um, and then residential occupancy. So our plan and our position is that we will have the site remediated or in compliance with DEP regulations by the time the building is ready to be occupied. Uh, Mr. Baird is here with me this evening. 
who's done some preliminary testing and has some updated inf information about the condition of this site compared to uh, its condition the last time he was there, which was a few years ago. My name is William Baird. I'm with Web Engineering Associates in Situate, Massachusetts. Um, before I hand out these drawings, uh, I received the uh, letter from the Board of Health to you. I, uh, I then called Joanne Fagan, who is the um, director for Brownfield sites in the Northeast region. This is a brownfield site. <coughs> uh, just a little bit about brownfields. It was put in by the legislature uh, about 20 years ago. And what brownfield says that if you did not create the contamination, but you now are responsible for the property, and you clean up the property to the S1 GW2 standards, which is the most stringent standards in the Commonwealth, you are entitled to a 50% tax rebate on the cost of the cleanup. That's the incentive to take basically, in most cases, abandoned sites and that are contaminated and then have an investor buy those sites and clean them up. Um, we've done three or four brownfield sites in, in the last few years. Um, I talked with Joanne Fagan. She was concerned about the Board of Health letter. Um, I talked to her twice. I sent her all the information that she asked for about this site. And she would like to have a meeting with the Board of Health and, and um, your director shortly after the first of the year. Um, plus the potential owners of the property. So that's where we stand with the DEP this time. Um, she would really like to see this site cleaned up. She knows that it's currently in bankruptcy. The only way the site is going to get cleaned up is to have it be a brownfield site and have an investor take over and clean the site. Um, when we were here last, I uh, mentioned that we were going to go out. I presented to you the existing monitoring wells and the contamination that was present in those wells in 2013. We have since retested the wells, and I had the results of the resampling of the wells that are currently on the site. That site, that 
that well has not changed any in the level of contamination. Um, MW20 also had the dichloroethylene and vinyl chloride, and those levels of contamination are down considerably. In the center of the site, though, there's still um, there's still contamination that is above the standard. And that's in the area where the AUL was filed. Um, and so there's work to be done there to uh, clean up that area and remove the AUL. Um, the, other, the other wells, 13 and 7, um, you can see that those levels have gone down significantly. When you see EPH, um, and you see EPH with numbers behind it, um, EPH are uh, heavy hydrocarbons. Um, it starts at diesel fuel and goes to asphaltines. So these are heavy hydrocarbons. They tend to hang around longer than the lighter fractions like gasoline and uh, naphthalene, uh, two oil. Uh, and, and so I'm presenting this to you to let you know that we have done some work out there. We're by no means finished. There's a lot more assessment to do. Um, we need to put in deep wells, and, uh, and we need to put in more wells. <coughs> the, more, the more work we do in the site assessment, the better our cleanup will be. Um, and that's what you need to know. And working with Joanne, she'll have, Joanne Fagan, will have a lot of input into our work. And as an LSP, that's a great thing because when you have the DEP looking over your shoulder, the opportunity for you to do something that could be criticized later just goes away. Um, that's my presentation. Do you have any questions at all? Well, you any questions? <laughs> I'm just on behalf of the board. I'm just happy to hear that the willingness to sit down uh, with EPA and, and the city and, and the uh, applicant, the applicant's representative. I just think that that's a good. Now I understand it's a busy time of the year, um, but I would hope that that meeting could be held as soon as possible. She asked specifically that I make it after the first of the year. So my job tomorrow or Friday is to send her an email with dates and times that were available after the first. She, I deal with her, and she is going to deal with the city. She's then going to contact the city and set up the meeting. Right. Most likely in this building, if there's a conference room that's available for all of us. I'm sure that the city will find the conference room somewhere in this building. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Any questions? No. I, heard, I saw somebody raise a hand. So. Public want to speak? Ma'am, did you want to speak? Yeah, I thought you raised again. Okay, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm Brian. I'd like to speak about it. Please when this do. is all going on, just identify yourself. I'm Brian Rydis, and I live at 28 Newberry Street, directly across the street from the uh, heat treating plant. And, uh, you know, while all this cleanup is going on, like we lived in, there's three houses. Like, what danger is this to us? Is there any going to be airborne or, or uh... Um, <coughs> the, most of the way that these contaminants are dealt with is in the ground itself. So, so there's not going to be, as far as we're concerned, we want to avoid excavation. We want to treat everything from the surface down through the groundwater to the bottom of the contamination. Yeah, they have a cement floor in there, so are they going to break that all up and then take that out of there? Well, my preference is that when they, when they get the permit or they're sure that they're going to be able to move forward, I want to get there and drill a bunch of holes in that concrete floor and, and go down and get the information that we need. I'd rather, I can work both ways, but it's nice to work with a cat over everything, and that's what that kind of creates. Yeah, that's what my concern is, you know, will it be covered up so we're not breathing anything from You won't dust? breathe, you won't breathe anything. Yeah. Um, that's 
one of my tasks is to make sure that public health and the environment are served by, by whatever we do. If we did have open excavation on it, it the air. Now I get can I get in touch with you and get a card from you if any have any questions? Yes. What's uh, going on? Right. I had my yeah, I'm going to hang around, around so I'll give you my card. Thank you. And, uh, the other questions I have is, well, the job is going on. You know, what hours are these guys working? You know, and, you know, do we have to, like, adjust for a year and a half of them coming in on a Sunday or, or work until 9 o'clock at night or, you know, where are they going to park these vehicles with all this construction going on? We have no access to get down the driveway. It's a very thin street. And so, well, this is going on. We're going to suffer down there with noise, with, you know, all the stuff that comes with this building going on down there. But, you know... It is progress, and uh, you know, I just want to be able to talk to people in the city and the people that are building this building. Whenever any complaints need to be made, that we can adjust so that we're comfortable with you doing the project, and not you. You know, I have tenants. There's people that live down there. There's kids. Uh, you know, families on both sides of me, and. Uh, so we need, you know, somebody that we can talk to and all, you know, all of a sudden a big huge bulldozer shows up in the front of the house and starts pounding and the windows start cracking and, you know, the stuff that's going to happen down there. This is a huge project. Yeah. I, truthfully, I can't speak for the construction. I can only speak to what I know and everything I know is below the ground surface. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. I'm talking about oh, that. I'm going on about something. No, that's all right. Maybe if, you um, can answer. If the planning board approves the project, there'll yeah. be uh, construction hours in the decision that will limit the times that we can work on the site. Yeah. And uh, and we will also meet with you and your neighbors. Nice. Uh, we can do it in the next few weeks if you're available. I know Christmas is right around the corner. It's not a good time to meet. Yeah. But we're willing to meet with you with, with the owners of the project to talk about construction schedule, where people will park, yeah. uh, what, what inconvenience you might have, and what yeah. we can do to make it as little as possible. That's great. I haven't sat down with anybody. That'd be a great thing. And I can talk to my other neighbors. I talked to Declan, and we had small conversations, but that's about it. Okay. But it'd be great to get your name and your number and talk yeah. to them. So we need, we need to have an in-depth conversation with Declan. Yeah. And, t and, and talk about specific issues. We're, we're definitely willing to do that. Yeah. All right. I just want to have a voice you know, on what's going on and be able to adjust as we go along. with living across from this monstrous project, but we're all in favor of it because it's a neighborhood that needed to be developed and it's, it'd be nice to see that industrial building gone, to see Lynn, Lynn successful down there, and, and then to change our street, and, you know, I'm all about that, but just, it's going to take a year and a half and there's going to be some bumps for us people across the street, but we need to be able to have a voice there to talk to it, sure. and have, you know, something adjusted that, you know, that's bothering us. Yeah, the, I mean, the first, the first portion of the construction is going to be built, there's going to be a, a lower level garage and a garage off of Newbury. Yeah. Two levels of concrete garage. Yeah, one comes out on Newbury in the back. I already know all that. Right. And I understand I've been in the last meeting. And I you know, I understand until the building's up, once you guys are working inside, we're not going to be able to know you are there. Right. It's just the tear down and then the the exterior of the building. Yeah. And that's the problem. Yeah. You know, once we'll, you're inside we'll be, we'll be able to use the two levels of the garage for construction work as parking <coughs> during the construction process. Yeah. The garage will be high enough on the second floor for pickup truck. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk to you all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, my answer is here. I'll second. Yeah, I'll talk to you. And I'll, I'd also like to add uh, Jim Fats, he's the planning director. Um, Hi, Jim. Um, nice to meet you again. Pleasure. Um, what we've done, uh, again, the way this process has worked is there's a proposal. <coughs> I heard what you heard at the last meeting. We took that information, we shared it with our site peer review who had concerns, <clears throat> the health department had some concerns, so we engaged the proponents in dialogue. We called the EPA, excuse me, the DEP, as they did. There were conversations back and forth. We felt that the best way to manage this project would be, in fact, to have the DEP <coughs> meet with us and the city engineers and the city health department and also with the proponent to sit down, discuss all these issues <coughs> prior to anything going on here at the, the zoning board, uh, excuse me, at the planning board. Subsequent to that, the zoning board is also going to participate in this project. They'll be looking at it. 
there at all times there will be a um, an active monitoring of the site by city agencies just as the reason this came about because the health department got their information we sat with also the building inspector DPW all different city groups and then we also hire an outside engineering group to take a look at all of this so that's why we're here today having this conversation so <clears throat> every single piece of this plan will be before you and before the public you'll know what the construction hours are you'll know where the trucks are coming you'll hear about how many trucks are coming there'll be a construction plan mm -hmm. there'll be a level of comfort for the neighborhood to understand exactly what's going to happen that's on us to keep an eye out on what's transpiring on the site. We do that on the citizens' behalf. So anytime you have a question, in addition to speaking to the proponent, you feel free to give me a call or the planning department. We'll walk I'll you through each step. Okay, absolutely. You live in the greatest city in the U.S. <clears throat> that's what I feel. That's right. I agree with you. Nothing better. That's why I live here. I love Quincy. Okay. Sure. I'm a lifetime resident. Okay. Oh, Quincy High, 74. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah, hi, my name is Brendan Flutter from 28 Newbury Street. But the whole question is that, like, I mean, it's almost to me like a, an open ticket. They're coming through with things that are not there yet. So when we do have an issue, so when we can't hear everything that's happening, where do we go from there? I mean, because this is where we have our voice now. If they come up and say, oh, these are our plans, this is what we want to do, but their plans are incomplete. So now we're going to vote on it, on incomplete things. So this is where I have a problem. I don't have a problem yet, but I don't know the whole story. I understand. Um, and I think, as Mr. Fetz is represented, the process of the review process that's going on internally, if you will, and now including DEP, okay? Right. So that when the applicant, after that meeting, and at, at our next meeting or a subsequent meeting, there'll be a presentation of the entire proposal. We now will have the advantage of having information both at the city level and the state level with DEP, <coughs> which is information that will be shared by the applicant and by and or by the city at the time of the presentation. So right. there'll be a, there'll be another opportunity after the presentation for you to speak and you oh, okay. and hopefully everything will be explained to you at that at, after right. that meeting. That's exactly. Which will lay your fears. <laughs> I understand. All right. No, I just it's not the whole. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else in the public wish to speak? I just have one quick comment. Um, <clears throat> we've been doing a lot of. Um, commercial or industrial sites, you're giving people special permits to build residential areas where it wasn't zoned to build. So I think one nice thing the planning board could do would be, this isn't typical building. If you are going to give them a special permit, they shouldn't be able to do anything on Saturday. Saturday's a day off, it should be Monday through Friday, obviously never on Sunday, um, but you know, if they're doing it, you know, if it's a real construction project, you know, maybe like um, where they're doing that one by BJ's, let them do that on Saturday. But these people live across the street. Saturday's probably their only day off. They don't want to be hearing that jackhammer going at like 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock. I'm not sure what time it starts. But when you give them a special permit, which it looks like they are going to get it, don't make it that special. Just say you can't work on Saturday. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anybody, anybody else wish to speak from the public? Seeing that. Barrett. Just a, a, a question or, or a, a recent comment. Um, apologies if it was already raised. Uh, but when you guys do come back before it, it would be very helpful for me to understand exactly what the building is going to look like from 93, from the Pontiac Street Bridge, coming down Hancock Street. This is, you know, obviously part of the gateway to the city. And, and from 93, it's going to be very important to make sure that understand what this building is going to look like to people passing by. So if I could just put that on the... Um... Yes, on the revised plans from Arthur of Chu, he did, he did add the adjacent buildings to give the perspective of what the building looks like next to the existing buildings. Yeah. Um, but he, did, he doesn't have a 
rendering of what it would look like if you were in the middle of the Fonzo River Bridge. Yeah. And so I'll get on and do that for you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Any other questions? Okay, so I'd ask for a motion to continue this to, I'd like to say to our meeting on the 11th of January, but I don't know how quickly things are going to happen, and that's why I asked us to bear it. Uh, we're going to do our best to have okay. the answers by the 11th of January. Okay. So I would ask the board to uh, make a motion to continue this item to the 11th of January. Is there a second to the motion? Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. The next item is a continued public hearing for 23 to 31 Bridge Street site plan. Special Permit Planning Board Case 2016-12, which is continued from our November 9th meeting. I have, um, we've the board has received a uh, request um, addressed to me. Please accept this letter as a formal request to continue this matter. To continue this matter. January uh, hearing date. The petitioner has been working diligently to address all of the comments and concerns raised by the city department's peer review consultants, neighbors, and National Park Service, and recently and recently submitted uh, rev revisions to its plans, which are being reviewed by the city's peer review consultant. The department has advised that additional time is needed to fully review the proposed revisions and the peer review reports before recommendations will be available for the board's consideration. Thank you for consideration. Thank you for your assistance. Side by Edward J. Fleming was the attorney for the applicant. Um, we can do it. Okay. Yep. okay. So the request is to uh, continue it to January 11th. Do we have a motion to that effect? So moved. For a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The next item is a continued public hearing for 151 Hancock Street Site Plan Special Permit Planning Board Case 2016-13, uh, continued from our November 9th, 2016 meeting. Mr. Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Tim Johnson, architect for the business address at 190 Old Colony Avenue in Boston. Uh, our initial peer review was on October 12th of this year. <coughs> uh, we did make our rent our Revisions to the drawings, resubmitted them to the board. Uh, the second peer review came out on December 9th. There are basically five items to address. We did address those, resubmitted to the board. Uh, however, talking with the planning board today, uh, we felt that the, the board and the planning board need additional time to review our latest provisions. So we are respectfully requesting a continuance. A motion from the board to continue this to uh, the 11th of January. Is that acceptable? Yeah, that's good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So moved. Uh, second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. okay. The next item is a public hearing for 56 Albertina Street site plans special permit planning board case 2016. Dash 15, in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 11, Lindsay Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, uh, December 14th at 7.31 in the first floor boards and commissions room, Quincy City Hall, 1305 Hancock Street, Quincy, Massachusetts, on the application of Michael Grenham, 65 Res uh, Reservoir <coughs> Road, Quincy, Mass 02170, for site plan review under the Quincy Zoning Ordinance Title 17, Section 9.5.1, Site Plan Review. The applicant proposes the construction of a new two-and-a-half-story, three-unit condominium building combined with the rehabilitation of an existing single-family home to a total of four residential units with a total of eight parking spaces. The applicant also proposes landscaping, drainage, and other site modifications. The property contains 10,791, <coughs> excuse me, plus or minus square feet of land, and is located at 56 Albertina Street. <coughs> I'm sorry. 
the, the uh, subject property is located within the residence fee zoning district and is shown in assessor's plan 3100, lot 2, plot 15. Yeah. Good evening, my name is Tom Kapp. I'm an attorney here in Quincy with an office at 15 Foster Street. I represent the applicant, Michael Grahan. But uh, isn't here as a yet. Um, with me also is uh, Mr. James Burke, who's here on the property. Um, currently on the property, uh, as you see in the submission, is a single family home. It's a detached garage. It is in residence B, um, West Quincy area of Quincy. Um, currently, the property there is um, much dilapidated. Uh, what we're proposing to do is demolish the existing um, garage, rehabilitate the existing single family home. In addition, uh, develop a two and a half story building, uh, which would house three townhouse units. Each of them would have two um, car garages. Uh, the lot actually abuts both Branch Street as well as Albertina Street. Um, so it's served by both those uh, public ways here in the city of Quincy. What we uh, propose is that for the unit that is on uh, Albertina, which is the single family home, um, that would be accessed via Albertina Street. Um, the three units would, uh, the three units that in the new construction uh, would be served by Branch Street. Um, a portion of that street would have to be paved, which we'd uh, undertake to do. Um, currently, I don't believe that there's any stormwater mitigation there. Uh, you'll hear from Mr. Burke is what uh, he plans to do, and uh, he plans to propose to this board. Uh, and I think what his uh, proposition will show is that it complies with the current stormwater management. Um, so I'll turn it over to Mr. Burke at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Burke. Jim, Jim Burke with the uh, Cell Burke Associates. Uh, and uh, we've uh, field surveyed this parcel that uh, stretches from Albertina to Branch, and uh, it's about 10,700 square feet uh, for the, the existing single family houses. It's kind of run down. Uh, we did some soil testing out there up in the back, and you know, uh, we found uh, uh, a loamy sand. It's not the it's not fine sand which, uh, with no groundwater, which is long well acceptable to receive um, storm water. <coughs> uh, what uh, we're proposing is uh, a 72 foot long by 24 foot long <coughs> building, uh, with three units, <coughs> and uh, making improvements to the uh, single family house sitting up on uh, Albertina. Curb cuts will be improved for Albertina for uh, three space parking, uh, for three space. Uh, uh, parking for the single family house and uh, there's also going to be uh, a driveway that do not interconnect so there's no cut through traffic going through <coughs> but uh, also uh, there's going to be two additional spaces along with the two spaces for each garage so there's going to be eight spaces for the three building uh, for the three unit building and three spaces for the single family house uh, storm water is collected with uh, deep sub catch basins and uh, deep sub uh, manholes for water quality. We're going to dump into a, a single row of 11 uh, Cultec 330s, uh, which handle the 2 to 10 to 25 and 100 storm events. So we buffer all the storm events. Uh, in addition to this on site improvements, we have some off site improvements that we're proposing. Uh, we're going to be extending some pavement onto Branch Street. To uh, Branch Street in particular, <coughs> location is a little run down. Uh, so, we're proposing right now a 24 foot wide by 60 foot apron. Um, that's uh, right now working, and we're working with the Quincy DPW uh, to solidify that. Um, new building will have all new service utilities. The existing building will maintain all the their existing utilities. And, uh, and I think that's about it. <coughs> Do you have any questions? Any questions? Mr. Barry. Mr. Kavanaugh. Uh, <coughs> just a question about, about the parking. So I just want to make sure that I was looking at the dimensions right. So there's two parking spaces under each of the units on, uh, on the southern end of the property. And is there enough room for a guest to park in front of the garages at night? Uh, and, and not not disrupt the exit of the um, the other two units. I'd have to say no. I mean, right now you have what's that dimension? I've got 24 feet of, of driveway from the face of the garage to the curb. So you park there, 
you know, some cars probably can get away with it. Uh, but that's the whole point of the, uh, the uh, two spaces up top. Uh, and where's, there will be, you know, room to park down the end here, you know, for the spaces there. And, uh, you know, and, and the other option, the other thing is too is, you know, when you're having guests on this particular well, it's three units small. Hopefully, when they have guests, they'll invite their neighbors over and park in front of them. <laughs> so, okay. But uh, that's that's a okay, very that's nice. second answer. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none. Um, this is a public hearing. Um, anyone who wishes to speak, staff to please identify themselves. And uh, if you do not wish to speak, we have sheets on the side. Uh, both in, in favor and in opposition. Anyone like to speak on this item? Try crowd. Anyone like to speak? Anyone like to sign? Okay. I ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Mr. Pop. Mr. Stevens. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, the department is uh, prepared to offer a recommendation on this project. Um, and we have a number of conditions I'd like to read into the record. Uh, first condition, uh, if uh, the board chooses to approve this, would be the applicant shall submit a construction management plan to the inspectional services department at the time a demolition uh, permit and building permit application is filed. Uh, number two, uh, the stormwater operation and maintenance plan shall be recorded at the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds. Number three, the applicant shall apply for a stormwater connection permit from the Department of Public Works before construction. Uh, number four, the applicant shall replace the existing asphalt sidewalk in front of the proposed development on Albertina Street to match the existing sidewalk. Uh, number five, the applicant shall be responsible for the asphalt, asphalt pavement uh, of of Branch Street to provide safe access to the site. The applicant uh, shall submit to the city engineering office for review and approval of pavement plan prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. <coughs> number six, the applicant shall confirm uh, the house numbers to be used with the city engineering office. Uh, number seven, the applicant shall develop and submit a dust control plan to the Department of Health for review and approval prior to any site activity. Said dust control plan is to be implemented during any site activities to ensure compliance with state air quality regulations. Uh, number eight, the applicant shall develop a rodent control contingency plan prior to the commencement of construction activities on site, which will include the name and contact information for on-call pest control company. Said rodent control plan shall be developed and submitted to the Department of Health for review and approval for, prior to obtaining their building permits. Uh, number nine, upon completion of this project, the applicant shall submit to the Planning Board and Engineering Office as built plans showing all utilities, building footprints, reference bounds, and benchmarks defining the total site uh, facilities and right of ways. Plans shall be submitted in a digital, digital format uh, that is acceptable to the city. Uh, number ten, uh, the hours for construction activities will be as follows uh, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday and all construction and deliveries shall be prohibited on Sunday unless a different schedule is approved by the Chief of Police and the City Traffic Engineer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Any comments or questions from the board? Who wants uh, wishes? I'm welcome. I'll make a motion. Um, uh, subject to the condition as articulated by Mr. Stevens. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to accept the uh, recommendation from uh, Mr. Stevens for 56 Albertina Street Special Permit Site Plan Approval, Planning Board Case 2016-015. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The, uh, <coughs> the next item is 
Just for all those that attended, I just want to say that a member Glenn has provided some uh, coffee and some munchies down the back. Everyone is welcome to see how that goes to the vice chairman. He's going to be there for us. <laughs> Help yourself. So we could still wait for the parties to show up. Uh, sure still here, so. Okay. Okay. So we're going to jump ahead to the next item, which is the public hearing, the 4373 Dennis Ryan Parkway Certificate of Consistency, Plenty Board Case 2016-COC03. In accordance with the provisions of Chapter 40A, Section 11, Mass General Laws, and Title 17 of the Quincy Municipal Code. And the provisions of the Quincy Center District Urban Revitalization and Development Plan, an Urban Renewal Plan for the City of Quincy Center Urban Revitalization District, dated May 7, 2007, as amended. Uh, the Quincy Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, uh, December 14, at 7:43, 13 at, at uh, in the first floor board, boards and commissions room. Quincy City Hall, 1305 Hancock Street, Quincy, Massachusetts, on the application of Quincy Chestnut Place, LLC, for a certificate of consistency as defined within the Quincy Zoning Ordinance, Title 17, Section 10, and in accordance with Section 12.02, Subsection 3, and Section 2, Overall Redevelopment Strategy of the URDP, and pursuant to Section 8.3, Quincy Center District, Quincy Center Revitaliz Urban Revitalization, Urban urban renewal uses. The applicant proposes the construction of a high-rise 15-story luxury residential tower with retail and commercial space on the ground floor, 124 residential units with a mix of studio, one-bedroom, and two-bedroom units. Parking provided within the dedicated spaces within the adjacent parking garage to be constructed. Approximately 7,850 square feet building footprint with plus or minus 117,000 total gross floor area. The subject property is located within the Urban Revitalization District of Quincy Center Zoning District, dash 15, and is more particularly identified, shown on the, on the City of Quincy's Assessors Plan, uh, number 1142 is Block 40, Lot B. Planning Board shall issue a certificate of consistency upon finding that the proposed project is consistent with goals, objectives, and requirements as set forth in the URDP. Mr. Hines. Mr. Chairman, and through you members of the board, my name is Bob Hanez, and I'm here on behalf of Chestnut Place LLC. As the chairman said, we are here seeking a uh, certificate of consistency. We also know it's going to be a long process. Right now, as we speak, this matter is before the city council uh, for the LDR. So we know we're going forward with regards to that, and I know the board has to take this into consideration. We also know we have to go through the paper review process. Uh, but right now, present before you, I have the team of Chris Schulte from EBI Consultants, uh, as well as Arthur Casey from Chestnut uh, Place L, uh, LLC. Uh, what we're proposing, and as the Chairman said, we're proposing to build a 124-unit apartment building there, right on or luxury apartments, right across from the parking lot that exists now across from Quincy District Court. Also underneath, you're going to be, uh, you're going to, there's going to be all commercial space right underneath there. We feel that this will ultimately be the consistent with what the proposals are throughout Quincy Center. Uh, what I'm going to present to you before is right now is the school team right now that's going to present a should be PowerPoint presentation of what the building's going to look like, the architecture inside. And again, I think after the board sees this, and after we go through the whole process and work together, both the applicant and the board and the city, we're going to see this is going to be an auxiliary support <coughs> apartment building that's going to be a huge asset to the city of Quincy and what the proposals are down in Quincy Center. So if I may. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Carlos Sculpey with EPI Consulting, the civil engineer for the project, um, I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, so I'll go through a little bit of the context of the site, where this is, how it relates uh, on a high level overview to some of the work the city is undertaking in the parking lot and surrounding area, and then talk a little bit about the, uh, the building as well. So, so what we have here is uh, the, the site's located in the northwest corner of the existing Hancock parking lot. Uh, so you have it right here in this location. 
courthouse. It's located on the opposite side of the street. Uh, the West of Chestnut building recently completed, uh, not yet shown on the aerial map, it's in this corner. And then we have the existing forest building and a number of retail buildings along Hancock Street in this location. So the frontage is on Dennis Ryan Parkway. There's an existing property in between Cottage Avenue and Parcel, and there's also additional property in the road and the site as well. 